All right, so yesterday I tried doing uh, a new video and it ended up being way much uh, too long for me to say that it was up to my standard. So basically this video is from Norwich 93 CMP and we're gonna go over the M1 carbine data sheet and how to fill it out by actually looking at parts and doing it. So I got permission from the carbine club to do this and show you the form. So we're gonna go right to it. Reporters, you obviously, I always think you should put stuff on the back. We're going to talk about the bolt. All right. So the bolt themselves, obviously we have flats. If there's a missing part right there in that web, that's a type 1 bolt. This is a type 2 flat bolt. These are type 3 bolts. But this is a World War II production. Why? Because there's no hole in it. This one has a hole in it. It's post-war. Both of them happen to be underwoods. Um, they're marked underneath the left lug. Most marks are on the left lug or on the right lug. One of the uh, differences I wanted to tell you about, there's also marks all over the place. Um, this one doesn't have any extra ones, but I've seen numbers under here for IP, sometimes flaming bombs, flaming bombs on the top, hieroglyphics for um, inland and stuff. But this right here, this shape that's called pointed or rounded, different than... different than this is the pointed one here you can see there's a two milling areas where that's more of like a ramp so this is on the later ones but not always so this is world war ii underwood production they kept that same style just be careful with that keeping in with the bolt this is a normal extractor plunger because it has the flat part if it's rounded and that's all it has that's the type one there are four different types of ejector plungers so this one here has only two faces on it it's probably early this one here happens to be type 3 which is round with a heavy bevel type 2 round with a, uh, a light bevel and i'll show the angles to you and this one here is a three-sided which is the earliest of them all these are these two in the middle are probably manufacturing differences but that's what they're talking about extractors these are all made by wadsworth for inland the earlier ones were marked w dash i and if you flip it over it just has a little area semicircle area that's cut out that's a type one if they flattened it with a cut like that you can just barely make out see that area that's all cut away but you can still see the remnants of that early type one this is a type two this is also marked w dash i later on they went to w dot i dot and that's type three, which is a whole flat lip. Type three. Looking at firing pins. Only two sides, and they're flat against uh, you as you look at it, and the flag itself is also flat, similar plane, that's a type one. If it has an area which is, has an area which is ground off right there, that makes it a type two. You'll see the line on this side, usually, and this part of the flag, the bottom part of the flag, will be on the same uh, plane as this. Where the type three, it's an angled cut, and this flag is actually on an on a incline. See it? That's a type three. All right, that's for the bolts. I'm not going to talk about the finish. You obviously need to know about the finish. Slides. So I have almost all the slides here. Type 1 through 4 all have a straight cut here. It's going to be 90 degrees. And then the type 5s and 6s have this what's called a 6 o'clock or an angled cut. It's greater than 90 degrees. Type 1 is a Winchester. Has a semicircle cut all the way around from this top portion all the way over. 
all other ones that I've seen are type twos, which have a cut across the top right there. Their arms are basically the second largest of the size of the arms. That's types ones and twos. Threes, it was totally changed. Now it's what's called a box. So sometimes this one's marked in the back of the box. Sometimes they're marked on the top over here, inside, left side for IP and um, Grand Rapids sometimes, sometimes underneath. Uh, I think I have an extremely rare Winchester which marked W right here. It's actually double marked. That's a type three. That's also a very thin, the thinnest of the arms. They changed the arms from a three to a four. They made it really wide. It's the same as exact as a three, except for this arm part is wide. There is a variant called a two four and it's only made by postal meter. It says N9 down the bottom and it has a semicircle cut like a type two, but the super wide arm like a type four. Now I don't have an exact uh, type five to show you, but basically um, it's the normal box like a type three and later, but the cam area is changed called a six o'clock. And what it does is there's different dwell time here that allows a bolt to stay in longer in battery. And it just had a little bit better ballistics and burning and things like that. But the change from a five to a six is gonna be on the right hand side and it's gonna be cut out and that's gonna be for the cam lever or the disconnector. And that's how it's gonna uh, tilt the rod and, and uh, work the, um, the uh, firing mechanism. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you is called, it's called a cam cut. This one is called flat, or it's, and it's extremely early. You should probably only see it on Winchester and Inland. This is a heart-shaped. This is all later production. I've seen this on Type 2s and everything later than that. Slide stops. i got to find them. Oh, I did my slide stops. Great. No slide stops. Thought I had them out here. Oh, here they are. Slide stops. Two different variations. The top one is the type one with the type one spring, which is shorter than the type two, which has indents on it. See the size difference there? Don't mix up an extractor spring with any of these springs whatsoever. If you trust me, you'll be in dire straits. That's basically it for the, uh, the slides. Trigger housings now. M1 and M2. There they all are right there. Type 1. Excuse me. As you were. From left to right. Type 1. All milled. Type 3. Type 4 is braised. You can see the lines in there. 5 and 6. Type 1 milled. Back bevels. And the front bevel. Be careful. Almost, I think every type one I've ever seen had a narrow wall to the back. See this area right here? That's called a narrow wall. Just make sure nobody's monkeyed with your stuff. Type two, same exact as the type one, except for there's no front bevel here. No front bevel on the type two. Type twos had narrow walls and went to wide walls later on. Type three. All he did was eliminate the back bevel. Everything else is the same. Okay, no front bevel. We have definite wide walls on all the three type threes I've seen are wide walled. Type four stamped brazed. None of these should have an oil hole on them on this side from the fours earlier. Did it happen? Maybe, but probably not, especially if it's refinished. Okay, wide wall for all fours. Fives, wide walled. No bevels, front and back. And now we have the oil hole. This is new old stock. This was never issued. So this was made with the oil hole, the type 5. 6 is just like that, except for there's a few differences. It's not a wide wall, only on the right hand, excuse me, the left hand side. Left hand side as you're firing. Left hand side's wide, the right side is narrow. It's got special grooves in for the M2. This is also replacement for the M1s. 
It's beveled here. It's got an extra cut across the flat there and an extra cut back there. Extra cuts inside, and that was to do uh, for the M2s. That's the trigger housings. Now we're going to go to all the parts in the trigger housings. Safeties. Type 1. This has heavy bevels. That's an inland. This is how it catches into the into the plunger system. Type 1. Checkered. Then they took off the checker and they made it smooth. Type 2. Type 3. They cut out that area a little bit more. I've seen transition between 2 and 3 where they did this first. And then they put it in the machine and did this and you can still see some marks on it. Plain faces, nothing nothing on the faces. This one happens to be marked uh, on the inside. You got to be careful. See, W-B for IBM. Some of them are marked there. Most of them are marked on the ends. Type 3. Type 4 is the flip. I don't have the World War II one to show you right now, but is a flip. That's a Type 4. Mag catches. Here's almost every mag catch. Long serrated face. Long smooth face, short smooth face. There was a variant in here, right here, that should be a short serrated face. Only Inland produced those. Then you have M for modified, that's what the M means. From here, this way, this rail is thicker than these rails. See the difference? Be careful. If you have thin rails and it's a smooth face, they're trying to sell it to you as a smooth face, it's a fake. Don't buy it. And then we have two different types of actual World War II Type 4s. Uh, notice where the markings are. There are a few markings earlier than this right there for postal meter. This one has HI. I've seen Ws over there on that, on that lug. But there were Ms with the underline. Triggers, all I've seen ever was a uh, type 2 trigger. Uh, most of them marked in here or possibly on the left-hand side. I think this was marked over here. Rock holes are marked on both sides of the arms. And then Grand Rapids are marked on the top. They also might have a notch in the back of the back of the trigger. Two types of um, trigger springs I've seen. This is the generic one uh, that was used and replaced any of the 